thought I paid for an all-inclusive um, transportation from <laughs> yeah, stop laughing. Yeah, from uh, you know the airport all the way to the hotel on Barakai, which means you take the bus from the airport to the port, which is where I'm at. Then you take the ferry. Then you take another bus back over on the other end to get to the hotel. And that was round trip. But I was surprised because we had to pay 750 pesos. And even more surprised to find out that I paid 450 and she only paid 300 because she's local. Which is bullshit. But, <laughs> and it's just a tax because they, they don't do this on, in uh, Palawan. They did not do this on Katanduanas. But in, apparently in islands where it's very touristy and they can basically soak the tourists, that's what they're going to do. So they charge uh, an extra municipality tax here. You know, in addition to the transportation tax, so it's not as simple as just buying a ferry ticket. It's um, you pay the tax as well. That's one of the dive sites. Okay, so here we are on the main beach uh, called White Beach here at uh, Barakai. And I'm facing more or less northwest uh, along the beach. The beach is over here to my left. And you can see behind me that this is actually one of the two main streets in Barakai, but you'll notice it's made of sand. And that's not it's not atypical for some of these beach towns in the, in the Philippines. I know in Palawan, I was at a place called Sabang, and it was the same way, just much, much fewer, way, way fewer people. So here, here in uh, Boracay, what you'll see more, more than any other uh, external population group is Koreans. Get my slippers on here. I would say that Boracay is a little too crowded for my taste, but in general, it's a beach, right? You know, I can't, not too many beaches to get pissed off about. And uh, lots of girls in bikinis running around, so that's always a nice, pleasant thing to see. Lots of water sports to do, if you like. Um, pretty, pretty decent setup, you know? So, that's the uh, face in the northwest end of the beach. That'd be station one is where I'm at, and going forward, and then there's station two and station three, they call it going south. That's one of the rough ways to navigate here. So if you, they, if you get a hotel, they'll let, they'll, you want to know where it's at, they'll say I'm in station two, which kind of helps you narrow down the neighborhood. So, no, this is Baraka. Pretty good beach day. Had a chance to do some exercise. I did a run on the beach and did some swimming out there. So I feel tired, but good. So. <laughs> this is a normal street in Baraka. It's basically going athwart ships on the island, side to side, from the nice beach side to the not a place. And this is my hotel. So it's amazing how they can squeeze very modern structures and jam them in. But uh, I think it's going to be very nice. I haven't seen the room yet, but I, I like the vibe. Subic Bay. Subic Bay. So I'm here to watch a triathlon. I've, I've done many of these in the university, I think 17 total, I think, and one biathlon, which is bike and swim, bike and run, and I've done two marathons in my life, but but here, uh, this is a, uh, a competition for Filipinos only, and to decide who is going to go play at the Southeast Asia Games, compete, I should say. And within this competition is a free. There's a sprint race, there's a standard race, and there's a long endurance race. Like the, uh, the, um, not a full marathon, but the full triathlon. So, I think it's cool. What you don't see in the U.S. is all these team t-shirts that people wear. So, so, so you see behind me the guys wearing the Saab Scania shirts. You know, and so, and they, they're pretty proud because they show where they're from. And I, I like that. So, pretty cool. All right, so why did I come all the way to Subic Bay uh, just to vacation? Well, it's because this is where the old naval station was, and I passed through here, honestly, over 35 years ago when I was a midshipman in the Navy. 
And I just wanted to see what became of the area since 1992 when the USA left both Clark Field and Subic Bay. This is the old pier that any of you sailors out there who's made a port call in Subic Bay, you likely tied up to the big pier out there. Across the way, beyond the water, that's QB Point. Yeah, so behind me here is just a concrete building, which kind of looks like a cheesy apartment complex. And there's several others back there as well. A total of five buildings, and it makes up what they call the Subic International Hotel Complex, which is fine. And it's basically um, enlisted quarters over here. So this one is absolutely BEQ-9. So if you're ever a sailor and you're a single and you're assigned long-term to this base in Subic Bay, you might have very well been stationed here and be your, your, your house here. You might have gotten a room all to yourself. Probably not. Depends on what the set situation was. Yeah, this is the river between the old naval station here and the city of Olongapo here. Affectionately known in the old days as Ship River. And then it heads out to sea that way. Still pretty ready looking. Hi, I'm Russ, sailing vessel Tautog, February 9, 2023. Just back from the Philippines, I've been still getting over the jet lag, getting over a little bit of a cough I picked up, and also uh, um, I had, well, had food poisoning a little bit, but I'm well past that. So, still kind of feeling funky health-wise, not feeling motivated at all, but, um, but I'm happy to be back, happy to be in, sitting on the boat again, and I miss my ship. Um, and let's talk a few, about a few things. So. Um, I just came in topside from doubling up some of my mooring lines because it's really blowing pretty good and I'm getting a pretty bouncy ride. It, it, hell, it'd be better as being an anchor right now if, if, I, if I could have managed that. Um, one of my mooring lines broke while I was gone, so Ethan, from the, my next door neighbor here in the marina, he saw that and he jumped aboard and saved the ship while I was gone. Um, you got, I got a picture of that here, it's just old, old, old line, and I, I've always liked it for sentimental purposes, but it's, maybe it's time to go, so I'm doubling up my lines today, um, and mostly kind of reviewing the work list. So let's talk about what I have on the work list. So there's two, two big repairs that we got to do, and the first is um, um, the reefing line. Let's go topside and check that out. Hang on a second. So I've got the main bundled up under the cover, of course. But that doesn't mean I can't show you one thing. So this is the back of the the reefing line for the second reef. Uh, I don't think it's perfect how it's set up. I'd like to make it perfect, but the immediate concern is fixing this. So this is my first reefing line. This baby is supposed to be secured there. And it just ripped itself off when we had an accidental jibe. When we jibed, the, the boom came swinging across pretty hard from port to starboard. And at that point, this thing was broken. So that's okay, so that's the reefing line. And don't ask me about the accidental jibe. Um, I'm, I'm the captain. I'm responsible. I'm, I'll put it that way, okay? Um, uh, jibing is not something you want to do to a boat. And um, we were playing around a bit, and that was a mistake, and won't do that again. But... That's just a matter of probably buying a new block from West Marine. It's probably going to set me back $130 or something like that. I don't know exactly yet. It's just one of those dumbass things. But that's, just, that's a very straightforward repair. The sale's undamaged, so there's really no issues per se. It's just breaking out my wallet and buying a new block. So um, the uh, reefing line should be pretty straightforward to repair. The next big thing is putting the another put, repairing the halyard for the Genoa. Right now, the Genoa is in a bag on the deck and the sheets are off uh, they're kind of hanging in the cockpit and so you know there's something wrong when it, your Jenna was in a bag and the sheets are off so what I need to do is go back to the top of the mast and haul the halyard up and feed it back through and retie it to the top blah 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 not too thrilled about doing that again but step one really is figure out what was 
what did the line cut itself on? I had pictures of it somewhere, and I'm going to find those and show them. But the line had clearly been cut, almost like it had been cut by a knife. So it was, it, it, so I've got all kinds of lines. So using this as my example, so using this as my example, you know, the line was clearly rubbing against something, you know, enough that it just cut it like a knife blade through butter. And so it had been cut about two thirds of the way through uh, before it failed. So I just need to be smarter about how I run that line. I think I know what it was cutting on. There's a stainless steel fitting at the top of the mast, and I, I think that's what cut it. So, so we'll see. So that's that's not something I'm going to do today because we're just bouncing around too much to be thinking about going to the top of the mast. Um, so that's the two major repairs. Um, other jobs that I want to do. I'm going to grab the camera and we're going to go walk topside for a minute. <clears throat> So in the cockpit, here is a big problem that we have. Whenever I want to use the chart plotter out here, like when I'm coming into a strange harbor like in Nassau or someplace like that, and I want to be at the wheel with my chart plotter, the question is, where do you physically put it? Usually, I've, just, I've been setting it right there where the hat is. And that, of course, means if the boat's rolling, it's going to slide off and destroy itself. And that's problem one. The second problem, is that I don't have any power out here. So if the, you're running a chart plotter, so if, you're, if I'm running the chart plotter for you know more than just a few minutes, and I've got to figure out a way to get power to the USB charging port, and I don't have a USB charger out here. So what I've been doing, and it's literally ridiculous, I've been running an extension cord into the cabin. I've been running an extension cord, which comes off my inverter. There's an inverter down here. and so that produces AC power when I run an extension cord to the cockpit and from there I have one of the normal plugs to um, uh, to charge up the inverter, the, uh, the left tablet. And that is just bush league and that's just not the way it's going to be. So I'm going to build a rig that's like a shelf on the front of the, uh, the helm that will mount the uh, the, 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 the tablet and also while I'm at it move the depth sounder out there because it'll say show you that too the depth sounder has been a pain in my ass for quite a while now I mounted the depth sounder here and that's just a bad location it seems like everybody myself included I, we tend to walk by and hit it with your ass and stuff like that so the depth sounder needs to be at the helm too because the, the display is so short small that I can't see it it needs to be closer to my eyes, and also it's in a place where when the sun shines on it, you can't see what the numbers are. So that's a that's an improvement I really, really want to make. Um, so that's a job we're going to do while we're in port. So I've been scoping out these jobs today and kind of doing my project manager thing and s scoping out every little step of the job and what's going to be required and how long it's going to take and what materials do I need and how much that's going to cost and kind of, you know, putting all that together and, and at some point you come to a conclusion where maybe it's smarter to hire somebody to do a certain job you know and, I, and I'm not above that it depends like certainly if it comes to welding maybe I buy a TIG machine and I just tack what I want together and then pay a real welder to um, to actually weld out the job so it's done right you know maybe, maybe that's what I end up doing I, I don't know how that's gonna go but that's what I'm doing today I'm feeling kind of lethargic anyway. I don't really feel like doing a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm coming off a of jet lag still, and I'm also, so I'm not sleeping too well. And I've got this residual cough that just doesn't, it's been on day two now. And I just kind of don't feel good. So, so it's a good time to think, right? You know, that's what I'm doing today is uh, thinking about these jobs. Um, so, so. <clears throat> Um, no complaints here. Um, I know some people, um, when I, after episode 84 came out, a few people said things like, well, you don't have salt water in your veins, blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't think that I'm quitting sailing. I, I think maybe changing the way I sail. I mean, certainly today I didn't feel very motivated about anything, but um, that's because I'm not feeling well. But I, I certainly am looking forward to getting back on the boat and finishing some more projects. And with my girlfriend aboard later this year, we're going to be back on the seas and sailing and doing our adventure properly. So I, I would just ask you to be patient with me. I, I don't know what uh, schedule I'm going to have at the moment. Right now, it looks like I'll be back to the boat every third week for about a week off. And I think that's what I'm going to be working. But I just don't know how that's going to work out yet. i got to wait till I get there and, and we'll kind of get the lay of the land and 
start this job, try to make some good money, and try to help the project up there in, in Georgia, and be thinking about what to do with this boat. So, with that, I appreciate your comments, and I, I, I really, really do. And I'm, I'm looking forward to getting started. If, if you have any comments about the projects I have in mind, I know I probably didn't do a great job of explaining it. Uh, next episode, I'll, I'll do better. I'll break each job down to the details and show you what I'm planning to do. And uh, we'll do that in a video in a couple of weeks here. So with that, take care, everybody. Bye.